Hey everyone and welcome to a new video. So this is going to be a video about shaders. It's actually the first of a mini series of videos that I would like to make about shaders in Max MSP, since there is still a bit of confusion about them. Um, as you maybe know, I already have a lot of videos about shaders on my channel, which you can find here on my website. But with this series, I really want to start with the very basics and demystify shaders properly so that no hitch is left unscratched. First of all, what are shaders? In general, to render something on, our, on the screen of our computer, to render 3D shapes, applications like MaxMSP always use some kind of API. Um, in the case of Max and many other applications like uh, Touch Designer, Unity and so on, they all use OpenGL. So OpenGL is this set of instructions which is developed by the Kronos Group, which is used from those applications to send commands to the graphic cards. So, our application is basically the client, the graphic card is the server, and our application sends requests to the server in order to render stuff on the screen. For example, every time we create a GGL grid shape, we are actually asking to the graphic card of our computer of transforming a series of number informations, which are the vertices of the shape, the color, the texture coordinates, and so on, we are asking to our graphic card of transforming those into pixels color in our rendering window. And this happens through what is called a rendering pipeline. So this is the rendering pipeline of OpenGL, as it stands by now. So we are now going to describe what happens every time we render a shape in MaxMSP and every other application that uses OpenGL. And then we will see how shaders fit into the equation. So first of all, uh, there is the vertex specification stage, which is what we say. So when we create a GGL grid shape, we are sending some vertex specifications to the graphic card. So some informations about how we want our vertices to be rendered. Then there is the vertex shader, our friend, which is a stage in which we can transform vertices information. We can even create new vertices information and a vertex shader is applied to every single vertex. So every single vertex must be transformed, must be attached to some new informations and so on. This is always necessary. Then there is the tessellation and the geometry shaders, which are optional, so we will not discuss them for the moment. Then there is the vertex post-processing stage. Now, this is not a programmable stage. Like all the blue stages that you see here, it means that we can program them ourselves. The yellow one, we cannot program them ourselves. So, the vertex post-processing is a stage that takes place automatically. We cannot uh, really do anything about it. And this is where all the shapes that we are rendering get clipped into the unit cube which is then used to basically map our three-dimensional space into a two-dimensional space, which is our window. Then there is the primitive assembly in which OpenGL and the graphic card basically uh, understand how we want to render our, the triangles that create our shapes. Or for example, if they are lines or point, they basically put the, all the stuff together. Then there is the rasterization in which all the triangles that compose our shape basically are going to be converted into pixel coordinates. So we know that this triangle that is part of our shape will be a certain amount of pixels on the window. And then there is the fragment shader, which basically takes those pixels as input and we can change the color of those pixels. We can use, for example, some simulation of light or we can change them actually the way we want. We can even create uh, some fake 3D shapes, let's say, using uh, ray tracing or other techniques directly into the fragment shader, so simply manipulating the color of the pixels. And then there are the per sample operations, and here is where the application decides if some uh, pixels are overlapping. For example, if a shape is in front of another, the shape behind it is not going to be shown. And also some blending operations happen here, and this is uh, happening per fragment, so per pixel, per sample basically, and this is where it happens all at the end. Good, so this is the rendering pipeline. Every time we create a new shape in Max, all of this takes place. Now, getting to shaders. So shaders are the way that OpenGL gives us to basically change the rendering pipeline so we can change it according to the effect we want to achieve. And the only two shaders that are always needed are basically the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So let's now get into Max MSP. First of all, let me specify that I'm using GL3 and not GL2. GL3 is the OpenGL engine that we can choose here from the preferences in Max. And I'm using GL3 because it achieves the best performance. 
with modern hardware and basically GL2 is obsolete and is legacy. We don't want to use it mostly unless it GL3 breaking your patches, you mostly want to always use GL3. And that is also a difference in the syntax in writing shaders between GL3 and GL2. So we will not focus at all in the old syntax, syntax of GL2, you can actually see it in some of my videos. We will focus only on the new syntax of GL3. But before we actually write the shaders, let me show you the objects in Max that we can use to write shaders. Good. So first of all, we have the object called GGL shader, as the name suggests, and this is an object that must be attached to a three-dimensional shape. So for example, we can attach it to a GGL grid shape. For example, if I give the name shady to this shader and I give the attribute shader to this GGL grid shape with the name of the shader, uh, this shader is going to be used to modify the appearance of that grid shape. Now, if I double click on the GGL shader object, you can see that it opens and uh, it opens the default shader, which contains a vertex shader. As you can see here is written program name VP, which stands for vertex. Then there is a geometry program, geometry shader, and then there is the fragment shader. Now, as we say, the geometry shader is optional. So, um, for example, we could, if we don't want to make any geometry processing, we can actually delete it and just be left with a vertex shader and a fragment shader. But we are going to see all this stuff more in details in the next videos. For the moment, I just want to show you the objects that we can use in Max to work with shaders. Good. Then we got the GGL slab object, uh, which also works with shaders. If I double click on it, you can see that it opens this window. And the, the language that we see here, the language in which uh, shaders are written when working with OpenGL is called GLSL. This is a language that is developed by the developers of OpenGL, which is the Kronos group. And the syntax is very similar to C, although there are a lot of functions that are specific of 3D graphics uh, processing, like operations with vectors and sampling and all these kind of things. So GGL slab and GGL shader are both objects that allow us to write shaders by using uh, the GLSL language. The difference between GGL slab and GGL shader is that GGL shader must be attached to a shape because it has a vertex shader and a fragment shader, while GGL slab it's actually only a fragment shader. So it contains both a vertex shader and a fragment shader, but the vertex shader is actually just uh, rendering a quad, so basically a square on which a texture is going to be attached and is going to be manipulated by the shader we write in the fragment shader. So we are just changing the informations of the pixels of the input texture. So we need an input texture as an input to GGL slab that must be triggered, for example, by a continuous stream of banks. And then we get as output also a texture. Now, a texture, just to be clear, is an image that resides on the graphic card of our computer. So it's like a JIT matrix, but it's on the graphic card. So it's much more faster for our computer to work on textures than on matrices because they already reside on the graphic processor, which can make tons of operations per second and in parallel. So it's great to use it uh, for working on pixels because they, we have a lot of pixels and they can all be operated on parallel. Good. Then we got another object, which is the GGL Pix, which as the GGL slab only works with the uh, fragment shaders. So basically it also needs a texture input and it gives us a texture as an output. The difference is that if I double click on GGL Peaks, we can see that uh, uh, we can create shaders by using the gen language in Max. So basically we can use the gen operators and we can use the gen language in Codebox in order to write shaders. It is the same, exactly the same as GGL Slab, but it just uses a different syntax. So we can use the gen language developed by Max. Great. There is another object that uses shaders, although we cannot directly write it inside it. We have to attach it to a GGL shader by giving it the shader attribute, and this is the GGL transform feedback. Now, the transform feedback is a new feature of Max. Uh, it's an old feature of OpenGL, actually, but a new feature of Max, uh, which is great for working with particle systems, because the transform feedback takes the output of a vertex shader and feeds it back into itself, so we can work by retaining the previous state of the system, which is great for working with a particle system. And this also works with GLSL and needs to have a GGL shader 
um, to work with. Now, I got a lot of videos about creating particle system with GL transform feedback. I will put them in the description. So, uh, if you're interested, give a look to them. Um, in order to work with shaders in Max, we need to have an OpenGL context, which is active, and we can create an OpenGL context by creating a JIT world object and activating it with a toggle or giving it the enable one attribute. As you can see, it's already rendering this GGL grid shape. And this is needed because textures and shaders and everything that works with OpenGL, it always needs an OpenGL context, which we can only have by creating a JIT world or a GGL render with a JIT, with a JIT window. So remember that every time we want to work with shaders, we need an active OpenGL context. Otherwise, texture and slab will not work as well. Good, so this was a bit of a theoretical video. I want to stop it here though. And next one is going to be a bit more practical. We're going to see how to write shaders from scratch, how to write vertex shader and fragment shader for GGL shader, how to write, how to write slab shader and how to write GGL pix shaders. Great, so thank you very much for following. I hope this, is, uh, this has been instructive a bit. If you liked the video, a like will be much appreciated. Also, if you will subscribe to the channel, this will definitely improve the channel visibility. So thank you very much. Check out my Patreon to download a lot of patches about GL3 in Max and shaders. And again, thank you for watching and see you soon. Ciao.